of work is going to look very different to how it looks now. Nine in ten jobs will require digital skills. The World Economic Forum estimates that 33% of future jobs don't even exist yet. Will we adapt when the time comes? Meet and Code is the first step for children and young adults into the world of technology and coding. Thanks to SAP and the network of TechSoup Europe partners, we support local nonprofits with small grants that let them organize coding activities for young Europeans. Meet and Code has been happening since 2017 during the EU Code Week. We've started with 15 countries and by 2019 the initiative has grown to 25. More than 138,000 young people participated in nearly 3,000 coding events aimed at helping them to enter the digital world. The events are designed to show young Europeans how much fun coding can be and how it can help bring ideas to life. Simple to complex, beginner to advanced, be robots to space probe. All can be covered during Meet and Code. You can code in a classroom, local library, or outdoors. The creativity of our event organizers is endless. From unplugged activities involving grandparents, 3D printing of coral reef, to bots playing football or bananas playing music. Coding is not just about computers. Meet and Code events are eye-opening for most of the participants. The children and young adults want to continue this new adventure and invest their time in learning skills relevant to their future jobs. 80% of nonprofits that organize Meet and Code events say that they have become more aware of the potential of new technologies. If you are interested in organizing coding events but don't know where to start, go to our website and find the inspiration library full of free of charge learning materials in dozens of different languages. Don't forget to follow our social media to get a grant for the next edition of Meet and Code. Join our community! Okay, welcome, welcome everyone from across Europe to our virtual Meet and Code Award ceremony to announce the winners of, of 2019. My name is Tobias, Tobias Jürst. Um, I'm from SAP and I will be your host and moderator for today's award ceremony. Started in 2017, Meet and Code supports organizations across Europe to engage children, teenagers and young adults in, in coding. And in 2019, we had an amazing number of 1,200 events taking place across Europe with more than around 56,000 kids attending. This is such really a, such a great number and such a great achievement. So it is obvious that there's a lot of creative power in Europe when it comes to introducing kids to the joy of coding. And um, the founders of Meet and Code, which are House des Stiftens, Fundatia, TechSoup, and SAP have created this award to celebrate this creative power. Now, the winners do not only take away the glory and, and, and like a logo for their posters or websites, um, the award also includes a grant of 2,000 euro for the winners of each category. Um, but since this is an award ceremony, we would like to open with some music. So I'm very pleased to welcome uh, Thomas Siffling, one of Europe's most renowned jazz musicians. And fitting for an European award, he will present us his interpretation of the European anthem by Beethoven. Thomas. Thanks, Tobias. Hello, everybody. I hope you're fine and um, healthy. Yeah, 2020 is not only the year of the coronavirus, unfortunately, it is also and this is the much better fact, uh, the year of Ludwig van Beethoven's uh, 250th birthday. And of course, he was a great composer and wrote some fantastic music. And maybe his most popular song, which is based in his ninth symphony, is called Freude an die Ode, Ode an die Freude, Ode to Joy. And uh, as Tobias mentioned, uh, it is the European anthem. And I'm a jazz musician, so I would like to start my musical introduction with a short jazzy interpretation of uh, Ode to Joy. Hope you like it. Thank <laughs> you. 
now, Thomas, I give you a round of hands. Um, thanks a lot. And um, I guess we will hear some more from you a little bit later on. Um, so with this hymn, we, we would like to welcome this year's finalists. finalists. Our finalists this year are from several countries and they represent the following countries. So we have um, from Belgium, Goede dag and bonjour. We have Germany, guten tag and hello, of course. We have Hungary. Oh no, we have another from Germany. See, I was tripping in this chat. So from Hungary, uh, Jona Pot. From Italy, buongiorno to Italy. Now the more different countries, at least from for saying good day, uh, from from <laughs> not Macedonia, Dobaden. I hope this was right. Then from Poland, um, Dobrijen. Our next participant from Portugal, Bom Dia. From Romania, Bonatziwa. And from Ukraine, Dobriden. So I'm sure you're all excited to find out who the winners are, but we will keep the suspense for a little bit longer. Before we get to this, we want to hear from Hartmut Thompson, who is um, president at SAP for Middle and Eastern Europe, what meet and code means for him. Um, Hartmut unfortunately cannot join for us um, at this time for the ceremony, but we took the chance to talk to him this morning and ask him a few questions. Um, Philip, can you please share the recording that we that we made this morning and have to add. Welcome to the first Meet and Code virtual award ceremony in 2020. We would have loved to meet you all in person, but uh, unfortunately this is not possible this year. However, we will make the best out of it and we do have a very special guest here with us today, Harry Thompson, president for SAP Middle and Eastern Europe. It's so great to have you here, Harry. Really great to be with you virtually. I wish I could uh, be face to face today with you, but we all know it is not possible. But uh, amazing what is possible uh, with the help of modern technology. Pleasure to be able to join and celebrate with, with you your achievements. Since 2017, Meet and Code quickly grew into Europe's largest coding initiative and has already touched so many lives. What do you think is most intriguing about the initiative? First of all, I'm, I'm, I'm so proud about the success story of, of Meet and Code. This is, this is quite amazing. So we had already 2,900 events in 25 countries. We introduced uh, to 140,000 kids the fun of coding. This is so great. I'm, I'm, I'm really happy what we have achieved so far. This is a huge success and it's only possible because of, 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 of the hard work you're doing and your dedication. Thank you. And last year you had the honor of being part of the jury um, that got to pick the finalists and the winning teams. How did you manage to pick the 12 best projects amongst the more than 700 applications this year? So you can imagine how hard it is to pick out of such a big group the, the winners. It was really, it was a tough decision. But all projects shows creativity and passion, and uh, that made it easy for me, finally. So now we have the 12 finalists here with us today. We will review the winners within the next hours. But you know what? In my eyes, all of you here are already winners. You made it. Thanks for that. I couldn't agree more. Uh, the work Meet and Code does inside the communities is really so important and it's great to have SAP uh, supporting this initiative so passionately. How do you see the future of Meet and Code? Oh, there's a, there's a the big future ahead of us. So the best is yet to come. So this year Meet and Code will be expanded to 35 countries and we are partnering with the German Ministry of Interior. This is amazing. 
This is really great news and uh, we are growing year by year. It is so valuable to prepare more young children and teens with the digital skills for the future. Very true. Harry, would you like to maybe share some words with our 12 finalists here today? Yeah, I want to say a big thank you to all of you. It is so important what you're doing. Don't stop. Yeah, don't give up. I think um, what you're doing in your communities is, is, is really adding value and we will see the results in the near future. Please continue to do so. And last but not least, I would like to mention our congenial partners in this endeavor. It's partnerships like these that help us move the needle in digital education. Wouldn't you agree? Absolutely, absolutely. So we all know that uh, we are stronger together. No one can be successful alone. It's our network, it's our partnership that help us to get to the finish line. Nothing can stop us when we are partnering in a diverse team. I'm really proud what all of you are doing in your communities. Super. And thank you very much for your time, Harry. Uh, do you have maybe any last words? Yeah, sure, sure. Stay safe, stay healthy, take care of yourself. And I wish you all the best uh, of luck for the upcoming award ceremony today. So see you soon. All the best and uh, have fun. Yeah, thanks a lot, Hartmut, for your message and taking the time for, for talking to us. And now please welcome Alexandra van der Plöck. She is head of global corporate social responsibility at SAP. Alex, why, why is meet and code so important um, for SAP? Well, you know, I could give you a whole long list of reasons why it's so important. But, you know, I, I actually want to set this into the context of the situation that we're currently in. Um, you know, I mean, the elephant in the room, obviously, is COVID-19. Um, COVID-19 has set unprecedented changes into motion in our world. And while the immediate challenges of our current situation are incredibly urgent and also far reaching, one of the things that we shouldn't lose sight of is the fact that inclusive education, workforce readiness and decent work are crucial, absolutely elemental for economic, social and environmental sustainability, as well as future innovation. And honestly, this is more important today than it's ever been. As we speak, over 1.5 billion young people are not in school. And if we're not careful and act immediately, their education will be interrupted. And so will their potential to thrive in the economy that we will return to. On our watch, no one should be left behind. We want to and need to drive inclusive education and spur on future education. It's actually more important than ever. Because of that, uh, we at SAP believe that despite COVID-19, it's actually important to double down on our commitment to education and workforce readiness. Um, and we need to look at how we can build 21st century skills, digital skills, and on the other hand, we also need to look at how we can help organizations such as the 12 finalists that are here to accelerate the way that they can make their impact and their mark in the world. And this is exactly what we're doing with Meet and Code. Uh, we're basically combining the best of those two worlds. We're looking at how we can build digital skills amongst young people. But actually, to me, the magic and the secret sauce of Meet and Code isn't so much about what all of you are doing with the young people. It is partnering with you, the organizations locally, enabling you to be even better at what you do and spur on your creativity and innovation to make sure that young children are not left behind and that they are connected to the digital economy. To me, that's where the magic sits of Meet and Code. It's basically you. It's what you do every single day with young people. Um, people who have heard me speak have, have heard me say before, and I'm a true believer of that. We at SAP, we are not the drivers of social change. It is you. All we can do is make sure that we enable you and support you in the best way possible so that you can maximize your potential and maximize the social impact that you can reach. So it's all about partnership, as Hartmut um, has said as well, and is addressed to you. Um, and we believe in true partnership. And this isn't just true about 
you know, the way that we're running Meet and Code, but it's also true how we're working, uh, how we're setting Meet and Code up together with our uh, incredible partners, um, and, like Stifterhelf and, and uh, TechSoup Europe and so many others. We could not do this without you. I'm incredibly excited to see um, what the, who the winners are, but as Hartmut also said, you know, you're all winners. Your creativity and innovation absolutely blew me away. And I'm just incredibly excited to see what the future holds. Um, and I hope we can see even more growth and spur on even more creativity and innovation in the future. Thank you, Alex. Thanks a lot for your, for your words. And now next we have a little surprise, a special guest. For that, I would like to ask uh, Thomas again to give us a musical introduction to our special guest. Thomas, do you yeah. maybe have a song in mind? Yes, hello again. <laughs> I've heard about the, the nickname of our special guest, the next speaker. And uh, Smiley is such a, in my case, in my opinion, such a nice and friendly nickname. So I searched a song who fits on this name and found an uh, old traditional song from New Orleans. Louis Armstrong uh, made it very popular in the 1920s and it uh, also has some really nice lyrics, especially at the beginning. It's, uh, it's when you're smiling, when you're smiling, the whole world smiles with you. When you're laughing, when you're laughing, the sun comes shining through. And uh, nice and really positive lyrics, um, very important, especially in times like this. But it also has a very nice melody and let me play the melody now for you and if you know the song of course you can join me and singing the lyrics so feel free to do this when you're smiling especially for you smile <laughs> Thank you, Thomas, for playing when you're smiling. And with this playful introduction, let me welcome Ahmed Ismail, who is known, like, like um, Thomas mentioned, to everyone by his nickname, Smiley. So Smiley is the founder and director of the Sia Funda Community Technology Center. Center. And Sia Funda is a word in Sulu, a language mainly speaking in South Africa, and means we are learning. Um, so. After a couple, nearly 30 years in corporate IT, Smiley set out to South Africa in 2006 using technology to make a difference in townships and rural South Africa. And until today, um, Sia Funda has launched over, I guess, 200 community technology, technology centers nationwide and benefited tens of thousands of underprivileged young people. And this is really great. So Smiley, we are excited to have you and hear more about you and looking forward to your input. Thank you. Uh, firstly, uh, acknowledging Thomas for that wonderful, wonderful introduction. Uh, really, it was a bit emotional for me. Uh, but yeah, I think we, in this uh, particular time and era that we're going through, I think we all need to put a smile on everybody's face uh, with all the difficulties and the hardships. But thanks for the, the inspirational uh, uh, introduction. Uh, so greetings, uh, blessings and peace uh, from South Africa, the tip of Africa. Uh, we hope uh, and trust and pray that everybody is well and safe in these trying times for humanity. A world that we never thought about. Uh, I mean, just the other day we were all together, we could meet and greet and we could um, socialize and we could work, meet at the workplace. But uh, a day later, everything just changed completely for humanity. So. Um, 
this is challenging times for all of us, but yeah, as our president has said, we shall overcome. But most importantly, I mean, when I got the call last week from Gaby and from Philip uh, and Sunil to say that uh, I'm gonna share uh, this platform, uh, it's really been humbling and, and it's an honor for me uh, that in Africa we are able to share and uh, take part in this. Actually, it's a very historic and a momentous occasion as I see it, because probably this is the first virtual uh, award ceremony that uh, is taking place maybe in the world and uh, we, that we are participating in. So thank you to SAP for the invitation and the partners uh, for giving us the opportunity to share on this momentous and the historic occasion. It's really a re remarkable achievement. It's the, it's the real virtual world that we actually putting into action. Uh, when I got the invite, I had to do a bit of reading in terms of beat and code just for a couple of days. And really it's uh, phenomenal what is happening in Europe in terms of meat and code. Uh, very inspirational and motivational uh, uh, projects and programs that are taking place in the communities and at grassroots. And this sort of, uh, sort of mirrors what uh, we're taking part in Africa, which is called Africa Code Week. And, uh, uh, and I think it mirrors exactly what meat and code is doing as well. And it's all about taking technology to the communities uh, and giving the kids and the youth especially in the previously disadvantaged communities, the underserviced communities, kids who have never touched computers uh, and, uh, and so forth, the opportunity to uh, get connected to, 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 to the digital world. And how is all this achieved? And I think Alex's and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, the others uh, has also spoken about, is about collaborations and partnerships. And I think this is the most important aspect in terms of uh, driving innovation, driving technology into communities is that we can't all just do it alone. We have to all work together. So whether it's the private sector, whether it's government, whether it's academia, universities, the schools, and most importantly, the community partners. And I see all the community partners that are present today and the others that are taking part in Meet and Code. Really, this is the collaborations and partnerships that we need to build uh, and foster in terms of driving these technologies into communities. So in South Africa, we as Siafunda, uh, because we're driving it from a community perspective rather than it's from a government or it's from private sector or from universities, we coined the phrase CPPP, which means it's a community public private partnership. And we are saying that from communities, we are driving the agenda in terms of the, in, uh, making uh, digital, our communities digitally inclusive. Um, so that's, that's very important. And I think the most important role players in this whole partnership and collaborations are the communities. And as Alex has mentioned, the communities are the drivers. They are the change makers. They are the change agents in terms of uh, making the difference in the communities. Uh, for this, I think uh, from a Siafunda perspective and uh, in South Africa, we must acknowledge SAP and obviously other partners as well, but specifically SAP has been the founding partners of Siafunda stretching back to over 12 years now. Uh, without any hesitation in terms of, uh, you know, driving this, uh, the, this uh, inclusive, inclusivity of uh, technology in communities at grassroots. And so we must acknowledge SAP uh, in, in bringing these uh, impactful programs, uh, you know, uh, supporting this in terms of resources, uh, the expertise, uh, the skill that comes with, uh, with it. Uh, in terms of driving this, uh, the, these, these digital skills programs in our communities and making the communities access to these facilities at their doorsteps. Obviously, as we are speaking about COVID-19, it has created a lot of challenges. Uh, as, I, as I mentioned previously, that it has obviously changed our lives, uh, whether it is in our homes as well, whether it is in our communities, in our neighborhoods, uh, in our cities, in our towns, in our country in the continent of Africa and throughout the world, uh, COVID-19 has definitely changed. And lots of challenges have been brought about. I mean, today's event probably would have been a face-to-face -face where we could all meet one another, you know, shake our hands, you know, hug one another, uh, et cetera. But due to this uh, pandemic, I mean, it has created those challenges. But together with those challenges, it has brought like lots of opportunities for us as, uh, for, for us as well. So what is, the cha what is the challenges that we have found? So, the challenges that we see specifically around digital and ICTs is exposing the gap uh, in terms of access to the broadband, to internet, and access to computers and devices. So maybe I'll just give you an example in South Africa. Since March, the middle of March, we've had the schools that have been shut down universities. 
Uh, and so the government introduced, the Ministry of Education introduced uh, the online, especially for the matriculants, the grade 12 will be exiting school this year and then obviously going to universities and, and further education next year. So they introduced uh, uh, the online learning platform. But believe it, uh, the survey was done. It is said that only between 15 to 20% of those matriculants, which is probably close to three, 400,000 kids, have, have got uh, the benefit of, uh, of, of, of the online program. The rest did not have the benefit. Why? Simply because they did not have access to data, the internet, uh, data is very expensive. There's, in most of these communities in the townships in the rural areas, deep rural areas, these kids don't have access to the internet. And then also, uh, they don't have access to devices. In fact, there were some examples where in a household, even if one person's got a computer, but there's a three, four kids, only one, one of the kids can use it at a time. So we see the digital divide in terms of what COVID has, has brought, about, uh, uh, brought about in terms of a digital perspective. But together with that, it's brought about a lot of opportunities and capabilities that we as human beings have got. Uh, we have been blessed with intellect, we've been blessed with intelligence, we've been blessed with, uh, with skill, and now is the opportunity for us, and now is the chance, today is the opportunity, today is the chance for us to start untapping that potential and that abilities that we have been blessed with, to see that how we can, uh, uh, how we can bring about those opportunities to our communities. What has COVID-19 sh showed? It has shown the power and importance of tech, not just to keep us sane and healthy and self-quarantine. And as we pass these days of lockdowns in different countries throughout the world, but it is keeping us and working together. So what has COVID-19 done, for example, in today's, uh, the, 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 the today's event that's taking place? It has actually kept us connected. Right, all these different organizations around, the, around, around Europe, we are connected from South Africa, we've got somebody from America, we all get connected through, uh, the, uh, through, through technology. Technology is empowering businesses and communities to function remotely as well. It is keeping us connected to our loved ones. Uh, in South Africa specifically, because of the lockdown, there's no flights coming in, no flights going out, maybe some of the family members in other parts of the world, how are they communicating? through technology. As community organizations, this is an opportunity for us now to reimagine how we're going to be delivering our programs, because we're not going to be having the traditional classroom type environment of delivering our programs. So we have to reimagine how we're going to be delivering our programs virtually, right? Uh, innovate and be creating, delivering these types of digital programs to our communities uh, and using digital platforms developing our own digital platforms. Right? So that's the great opportunity that we have got from a community perspective. Um, we drew, when we ran the Africa Code programs in the, in the townships and the rural communities, I mean, we had kids from as the age of five, six attending these programs. And some of the kids that have come up with uh, solutions to their social problems, it was phenomenal. It was, we could not believe it that a kid would not use how to use, how to use a computer. But when we put them through the coding programs and we said, what is the social challenges in your communities in terms of sanitation or health or whatever other challenges you have? Using this technology, using the coding skills you've got, robotics, whatever, how are you going to address those challenges? How are you going to address, solve, solve those problems? And some of the, and, and the, and the kids come up with some such fantastic solutions that, uh, you know, it amazes us all. So what are we actually trying to do? Through these programs of Meet and Code and Africa Code Week, we are just giving opportunities and hope for our communities. And what is the benefit of this? It is empowering our communities, it's educating our communities, and it's e-connecting our communities to the digital world and the information society. It's enabling people to unlock their potential. It's enabling people to be creative, to be productive. They are, so, they, are, they are solving the social problems. They are becoming change agents. They are becoming the change makers, the real change makers in the communities and in the society. It's also creating and, and becoming a change, uh, becoming a catalyst. It's igniting design thinking, critical and agile thinking. How are we going to adapt to the changing environment that we are going through? It's also giving us the opportunity to become social entrepreneurs. Through the Siafunda project, we have got close to over out of the 200 community partners that we are working with, some have developed and become social entrepreneurs in their own right. 
So there's an opportunity for us to provide the new skills. I think as everybody has spoken about the fourth industrial revolution, what does it mean? In our communities, when we're speaking about fourth industrial revolution, it's like maybe somebody's gonna come with firearms or whatever the case may be. We have to demystify that. And how can we demystify that is by giving these kids and this youth the touch and the feel of these devices, whether it's robotics, whether it's coding, artificial intelligence, data sciences, internet of things, as we've seen in the video that was presented at the beginning, give the kids the touch and the feel of these devices and these equipment. So in conclusion, thanks for the opportunity. We are really honored to be sharing this platform with you, this, uh, the award ceremony with you. Uh, congratulations to the finalists. Uh, you have reached this, uh, reached this journey uh, at this point in time. And this is a, it's, it's a, it's a marvelous, it's a marvelous uh, achievement. It's a great achievement that we have reached uh, at, the, at this point in time. So congratulations to the finalists. Well achieved and well done. And uh, all the best to the winner. That's going to be announced uh, at the end of this program. So from Siafunda perspective, from South Africa, we wish you all well. Take care, be safe, be well. And let's meet again in the digital world in the near future. God bless and take care. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Smiley. This was a truly inspirational comment and speech from you. I'm, 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 I'm taken a little bit. So it's, it's really nice to hear what you have to say. Thanks for sharing your stories with us. Um, this is, maybe we are now in the perfect mood to, to announce this year's winners of the four categories of, of Meet and Code. And I have to say it was, a, it was a long road to this moment. So starting last year, we had to review over 740 applications. Then our jury had the tough job to select the 12 finalists that are all here with us today, the final organizations. And um, we should also give a warm thank you to the members of the, of the jury. And also you should know who that, who that is. So we have um, the Honorable Minister Cannon, who is the Minister of State at the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade from Ireland. We have Carola Carazzone, who is the Secretary General of Asifero from Italy. Um, we have last year's winner, Mark Jenkins, in the jury. We have, of course, Alexandra von der Plöck from SAP. We have Anna Sienicka, Vice President of TechSoup Europe, and Hartmut Thompson from SAP, who those were, those were those are the, the members of the jury. And th they had to choose um, one winner in each of the categories, girls do IT, diversity, code for the planet, and community. And um, each of those categories honors at least one, or honors one of the 17 United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs also called. Um, before we announce the winners, I want to point out Again, that really all of you are, are already winners. Being here means already a lot. So you made it until here. So please keep in mind, even if you're not make the first place, we, we, you and, and all people that are working here together are already winners, doing something good for the community. So I would now like to ask Alexandra, Alexandra van der Blöck, Head of Global um, Corporate Social Responsibility at SAP to tell us who the lucky winners are in the category Girls Do IT. Alex. Thank you, Tobias. Oh, this is getting very exciting. Um, <laughs> but, you know, as you know, you know, gender equality is a, is a huge element um, of our modern and inclusive society. And, you know, when we talk about I, technology and coding, uh, we cannot ignore the fact that you know, sometimes it's necessary um, to make sure that we push on the girl and young women front a little bit more um, and make them see the excitement um, that technology can bring um, and that it's not just for boys um, and that they can be just as creative and innovative as anyone else can be. It's just a matter of tapping into it in the right way. So seeing, you know, all these wonderful projects that were geared towards enabling and empowering young girls and women uh, was just amazing. And it was very, very hard to choose. But I do have the envelope here. <laughs> um, and I just wanted to say, you know, we were looking for um, projects that were particularly innovative. Um, and by bringing together theater, literature, and technology and addressing girls exclusively, 
this event, this particular event, was able to spark the interest of the participants in an incredibly creative way. The jury was also convinced by the fact that this resulted in a long-term course, which is now attended, and this is what I love most, by boys and girls alike. So having said all of that, the winner of the category, Girls Do IT, is... I hope you can all see this. It's Robot Fairy Tales organized by the Förderverein der Grundschule am Koppenplatz from Germany. Congratulations. Okay, that was long. <laughs> Congratulations and thank you, Alex. So First winner is announced, three more to go. Um, Clemens Frede, who is the member of the management board at stifterhelden.de, can you please tell us who is the lucky winner in the category diversity? Thanks to Pia, so of course, I'm happy to do so. Well, I think as we all know, only a diverse and inclusive world secures our future. Diversity gives us all richness in solutions and possibilities and inclusion embraces and welcomes all the differences that makes us as humans so unique. As embodied in the SDG 10 called Reduced Equality, this category, we are looking for the best event ideas to inspire children and young people, not only for IT and for coding, but also for a world with equal opportunities and appreciation. This year's winner has shown good integration and action and demonstrated how differences do not matter when it comes actually to digital learning by introducing children with mild autistic and mental disabilities to the basics of coding. This year's diversity award goes to, and here's the envelope. <laughs> it goes to Ot Eschlit Olopvitvani from Hungary. Congratulations. Thank you, Clemens. Um, now we have two. We are halfway through. So now would, I would like to ask uh, Claire Julison Duval, who is um, Corporate Social Responsibility Lead for SAP in Europe, Middle East, and Middle East and Africa, and Gabriele Hartmann, who is um, Corporate Social Responsibility Lead at SAP for, um, for Middle Eastern, Middle and Eastern Europe, I never know what ME means, <laughs> <laughs> to tell us uh, who receives the prize in the category Code for the Planet. Claire and Gabi, please. Yes, with a great pleasure. So uh, in this award category, uh, we are looking for events that combine um, not only coding, but also, of course, actions for the planet. All coding events that improve climate change education through raising awareness on this topic are, of course, of valuable contribution to SDG number 13, uh, which is climate action. And that's precisely what this year's winner in this category successfully did. During this very innovative and quite long-term event, uh, the participants learned about climate change, its disastrous effect on coral reefs, uh, but also how marine scientists are very successfully using 3D printers to recreate coral and implement them uh, successfully in the ocean and how the participants themselves can design and print coral reefs uh, with a 3D printer. Over to you, Gabby. Hello, everyone. I hope you can see me as I cannot see myself. So this is the envelope and let's see who won, shall we? So it is my great pleasure to award this year's Code for the Planet Award to Designing and printing the coral reef in 3D by Fundacja Architect PL from Poland. Well, congratulations, guys. Well done. Thank you, Claire and Gabi.
Um, and now we look at the final category um, community that is closely linked to the SDG 11 um, sustainable cities and communities. Anna Sienicka, Vice President of TechSoup Europe, would you please honor us and announce the final winner for today? Thank you, Tobias. Uh, can you hear me well? Yeah. Um, it's my pleasure to talk about the uh, community awards. So events of this category take into consideration local aspects and cultures, and they focus specifically on local community issues and challenges. Um, the events per design, they should bring together people who share the same goals and interests. And the winner uh, of this year award was special because uh, within this project, people not only work together um, on the current real local challenges, but they also learn the whole entire methodology of finding innovative solutions using IT. So without further ado, I have as well an envelope, white one, and I'm going to share with you the news. Who is the winner of the Meet and Code We Community Award? This is Cooperative Sociale Meta Onus from Italy with the project San Rocco 3.0, your guide to discovering the neighborhood. Oh, sorry, your guides to discovering the neighborhood. Congratulations. <laughs> Wow. Now, thanks and congratulations to all of this year's winners. Like I said, you're all winners and I'm very happy that that all came here and I can see in the chat that all others also like congratulate to the winners and that is very good to see. Um, you're really an inspiration to all of us and thanks for your hard work, support and, and devotion. So the last weeks and months have shown that you're all needed when it comes to helping young Europeans, young children and, and students to acquire the digital skill set they need to succeed. And um, now I'm also very pleased to introduce um, Rebecca Massesak, who is the CEO of TechSoup from San Francisco, and she wants to share a few words with all of you. Rebecca, please. Hello, everyone. Uh from everyone in the TechSoup Global Network, and in particular on behalf of our European partners, I want to congratulate all of the winners and the finalists of this year's Meet and Code event series. I also want to thank SAP for sponsoring this important event. The work that you all um, are doing to engage young people and creating solutions for the good of society is more important than ever, as we all know at this moment. Also, uh, I want to speak directly to the young people who have made Meet and Code the special event that it is. And let me just say that your ingenuity and your talent truly inspires me. At a time like this, we absolutely must celebrate the bright spots that indicate the possibility of a better future. And that's exactly what the Meet and Code finalists and winners are creating. Innovations that uncover new possibilities for building a better world. I want to acknowledge each of the winning teams briefly. Uh, to the protectors of our coral reefs, your online overviews and 3D printed replicas are a great way to help educate others about these important ecosystems and why they really need protection. So thank you for caring about our planet. To the talented animators, we need more solution-minded leaders like you who can help us understand our local neighborhoods, the histories, how to connect people to welfare opportunities, and to ensure that people with hearing loss or other disabilities are included. Thank you and congratulations. For the young coders and gamers, thank you for making sure that digital transformation and coding in particular reaches all people, including those with autism or other developmental disabilities. Well done. And to the lovers of storytelling, we need your energy to teach girls and young women creative ways to bring their love of story and technology together into robot fairy tales. What a fantastic and fun way to experience the potential for robotics. To all of you, your creativity and your solutions are exactly what the world needs now. I know that I'm not alone in wishing we could have gathered in person to celebrate your achievements. The world needs your creativity and solutions more than ever helping to grow the reach of projects like Meet and Code as a part of a worldwide network enabling smart use of technology for social good inspires me. Congratulations once again. We are all so eager to see what you do next. Thanks a lot, Rebecca. 
that's thanks thanks a lot I, I it's hard because nobody can hear if we all spend some some applause <laughs> um but we can yeah we can show our hands um yeah before we close and say goodbye i want to to hand over to clement Frede from stifter helfen we would like to share some news with you regarding meet and code um in 2020 so clements please thank you tobias yeah, thank you Tobias and thank you <clears throat> and congr congratulations to all the winners and the finalists. I think we, you really did an amazing job and it makes me and all of the organizi organizing team really proud to see what we have achieved together since we launched in 2017 when we first launched this unique initiative. I would like to express actually a big compliment for today's successful award ceremony. It was a new challenge for everyone to set up such an online event. And I think it was an overall very successful start for this year's version of Meet and Code. Special thanks goes actually to Philip on our team who originally has already invested a lot of planning and time and nerves in the award weekend, which was planned for Budapest earlier this year. And he is really now the main driver that we have been able to set up this online ceremony. So special thanks to Philip and all the people who work with you to make this happen today. App applause. <laughs> yeah. At the end of last year, I think, I believe it's fair to say that nobody expected that 2020 will turn out like it has. Therefore, we, and we, I mean the whole Meet and Code team, made the bold decision that 2020 will go 100% virtually, as we did now with the award ceremony. So what does that actually mean for you? Meet and Code will only support event ideas that will take place virtually. We understand that shifting to virtual is a challenge for many nonprofit organizations and maybe even participants. And frankly speaking, also for us, the project team behind Meet and Code. While we will continue to enable organizations via microfunding to facilitate virtual events to kids and youth, we will also focus on enabling actually these organizations in order to do so. Meet and Code will provide support on how to successfully design and execute virtual events. We are working on offers that support from technical solutions to methodological content and hands-on tips. So you will be not alone. On top of this, for the first time, implemented in four pilot countries, SAP volunteers will offer their help to the organizers of Meet and Code events. Last but not least, we will of course continue with the Meet and Code Award 2020. We are again looking for innovative idea, event ideas in those four categories that you all got to know today and for the love of a united Europe. Meet and Code will introduce actually an exciting and new award category, which is called Code for Europe, actually. So this, so this award category is closely linked to the SDG 17 partnerships for the goals. And this category seeks to initiate cross-border collaboration between organizations and unite children and youth of different backgrounds and locations through Meet and Code events. We are really all looking forward to new creative events in 2020 and to see you all again in one year. Thank you so much. Thanks, Clemens. So this actually concludes the Meet and Code virtual award ceremony. And also we had a lot of fun preparing this and also we hope you also had a lot of fun um, spending the time with us. We really hope that next year we will be able to meet our fan winners in person. That would be really great. Um, so stay well and to send us off, Thomas has prepared one final piece for us. And so I'm saying goodbye, stay safe. And Thomas, please. Yeah, hello again. Um, and also from my side, congrats to all our winners and all the participants. It was for me very inspiring listening, uh, especially Smiley, thanks for your words. Thank you to you all. 
I would like to end up with a song, um, a great song from the 1960s. Maybe you all know him. It's called Sunny. Thanks for listening. Stay healthy. See you and enjoy it. Sunny. <clears throat> Bye-bye. Have a great day. Thank you, Thomas. Bye-bye. You're welcome.